Hello everyone, thank you for watching my video today. In this video, we're gonna take a look at finding the arc length of a smooth planar curve at distance traveled. And we'll also gonna take a look at surface area as well. All right, so let's first talk about arc length and what arc length is. Now, arc length itself comes from our, our good friend that we learned back in Algebra 1, the distance formula. Okay, we'll talk more about that as we approach arc length here. First, some definitions. A rectifiable curve is one that has a finite arc length. So obviously we can only find if it has a finite arc length. In order for this to be true, the function's derivative must be continuous over the interval on which we will find its length. We say this function is continuously differentiable in the interval and that it must, its graph is a smooth curve. So consider a function f of x that is continuous differentiable in the interval a to b. We can approximate the graph of f using n line segments whose endpoints are determined by the partition, as you see below. Now, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking n and making it go to infinity. The more line segments, the more length, the more close we get to the actual length. All right, so you can read through this. This is basically just a summation of all little distance formulas. We simplify that. Basically, the important thing here is we get down to this right here. This is our arc length formula. All right, so if we're trying to find the arc length, we're going to use this formula if it's with respect to x or this formula if it's with respect to y. It's the same formula, just written with different letters in it. Okay, important note here, very few of these integrals can be solved without a calculator. The ones we do today actually can be done without a calculator, but we're going to use our calculator anyway. So if you need to get your calculator out, you can pause this video now and do so. Otherwise, let's take a look at our first example. Finding arc length with respect to x. Find the arc length of the graph of y on the interval 1 half to 2 as shown below. All right, so our formula, I'm just going to copy that down from right above there, is the integral from a to b of the root 1 plus f prime squared dx. So it's the integral, oops, the integral from a to b of the root 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So you can see here, all I did was just copy this down, root 1 plus f prime squared dx. Root 1 plus f prime squared dx. All right, we have a and b already. a is 1 half, b is 2. Now we've got to find f prime. So f prime, which should be easy to do here, y prime, is 3x squared over 6, so 1 half x squared, plus 1 over 2x. Remember, this is basically like x to the negative one over two. This will be negative x to the negative two over two. So minus one over two x squared. All right, now for our own sake and the calculator here, it might be a good idea to at least get a common denominator here. So I'm gonna write this as x squared over two. The common denominator would be x, two x squared. So we'll make this x to the fourth minus one over two x squared. All right, now I'm going to write my integral out. So it's going to be air, uh, arc length, sorry, arc length, which you use S for. Integral from 1 half to 2 of root 1 plus f prime squared dx. All right, now, as long as we trust our calculator skills, we can type this in all at once. If you don't trust your calculator skills, you can do it one step at a time. But math 9, 1 half to 2 of big square root 1 plus, I'm using double parentheses here, x to the fourth minus 1, close parentheses over parentheses, 2x squared, close parentheses, close parentheses, squared, dx. All right, we should be in 2.0625, which is 33 over 16. Next one, find the arc length of the graph here 
on the interval 0 to 8, as shown below. So this one, we're actually going to do it in respect to y. This time you could do either one here probably pretty easily. But just for practice, we'll do this one with respect to y. Um, the bounds here then are going to be 1 to 5. You can see the bounds are 1 to 5. Okay. So my integral for arc length here is going to be 1 to 5 of big square root 1 plus our derivative squared dy. All right, so let's take our derivative here with respect to y. First thing we should probably do is solve this for x then. So it's going to be y minus 1 cubed equals x. It's technically plus or minus, but we can see here we're talking about the positive one. So it's just positive. So then x prime would be 3 y minus 1 to the second. Oh, wait a minute. I just solved this wrong. I realized I just I didn't put the root down there. There we go. I was looking, something looks weird there. All right, so x prime is going to be 3 halves y minus 1 to the 1 half times 1, which we don't have to write. All right, so there's my derivative. All right, so it's going to be 3 halves times y minus 1 to the 1 half. Um, we don't have to do this, but this is actually a pretty easy one to simplify a little bit. So let's do that. 1 plus 3 halves squared is 9 fourths. And then y minus 1 to the 1 half squared is just y minus 1. So we do that just so it's a lot easier in our calculator to type in. All right, so math 9, and we're going to go 1 to 5. Square roots, 1 plus 9 fourths times y minus 1, which, of course, is just x minus 1, and the calculator dx. All right, so it looks like we're not getting a whole number for this one. That's okay. So I'm, making, I'm just double-checking, making sure I didn't mess anything up. So... Square root of 1 plus 9 fourths, x minus 1 from 1 to 5. Yeah. All right, I'm getting 9.073. All right, number 3, find the arc length again here. So we got... Find the arc length of the graph of y equals natural log cosine of x from 0 to pi over 4, as shown below. So my arc length here, I'm going to go s equals the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of root 1 plus something squared dx. All right. So my function is ln cosine x, so y prime there would be 1 over cosine times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So we just make that negative tangent of x. So that would be negative tangent of x. Uh, which again, we can simplify this a little bit down to 0 to pi over 4 of root 1 plus tangent squared dx. And you could stop there, or if you want to keep simplifying this using our trig identities, 1 plus tangent squared is just secant squared. And root secant squared is just secant. So we can get all the way down to here. Okay, so yes, can we do this by hand? We can. We should know what the integral of the antiderivative of secant is, but let's just go ahead and go right to our calculator here, shall we? So we have... Math 9, the integral from 0 to pi over 4, secant. So instead of putting secant in, we're going to do 1 over cosine dx. Oops, I typed it wrong. I just saw I made a little mistake here.
There we go. All right, so our answer we should be getting is 0 0.881. 0 0.881 would be our, our arc length for this one. Okay, so that's it for arc length for now. It's pretty simple. It's not, uh, it's not anything that's too complicated, that's for sure. But within that, we're going to take a look at surface area. So basically, surface area is three-dimension arc length. Uh, we're talking about not measuring the length from point A to point B, but the length of the entire surface. All right, so recently we've been doing finding volumes of solids of revolution a lot, but now we're going to focus on the surface area of solids, okay? Definition of a surface of revolution, if a graph of a continuous function is revolved about a line, the resulting surface is the surface of revolution. So basically what, we're, you know, what we've been doing is finding volumes of these, but now we're going to do surface areas of them. All right, so the area of a surface revolution is derived from the formula for the lateral surface area of the frustrum of a right circular cone. Okay, consider the line segment in the figure below here, where L is the length of the line segment, R1 is the radius the, at the left end of the line segment, and R2 is the radius at the right end of the line segment. When the line segment is revolved around the X of revolution, it forms a frustrum of a right circular cone. With S equals 2 pi RL, serving as a lateral surface area of the frustrum, and then R equals 1 half R1 plus R2 represents the average radius of the frustrum. Okay? In a similar manner to what we've already been doing today, an integral can be used to compute the sum of an infinite amount of these surface areas. All right, L will serve as the arc length, as you could probably already have figured out. All right, so there are two different cases of this. Um, case one, we're going to revolve around the y, the x-axis. Case two, we're going to revolve around the x-axis. Um, both of these cases, though, we want to keep it. We want to keep this in dx form. Okay. So the only difference is what our, I guess I, we'll call it our r of x is going to be. Our, our radius of x is going to be. If we're revolving around the x-axis, the function itself will be the radius. You can see here, the function itself is the radius. However, if we're revolving around the y-axis. The function itself would go down here. The x would be the radius. So revolving around the x-axis, we use the function. Revolving on the y-axis, we use the x itself. Okay? So here is the formulas. Okay? And then basically this right here is just going to be something different. Okay? Now we're not going to really do any problems today with r of y and g prime of y, but it's basically the same thing, okay? Um, the only difference would be, obviously, the, the letters would be different, and the bounds would be using the y's instead of the x's. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of these. Let's start with example four here. Find the area of a surface of revolution. Find the area of the surface formed by revolving the graph of x cubed on the interval zero to one about the x-axis as shown to the right. All right, so our formula, right from above here, S equals 2 pi, integral from A to B, R of X times the root of basically what we did for the um, arc length earlier today. So 2 pi, integral from A to B, R of X, root 1 plus F prime of X squared, dx. All right. So let's start with f of x equals x cubed. We know that already. f prime then would be 3x squared. Okay. And r of x, since we're evolving it around the x-axis, r of x is f of x. So r of x is also x cubed. All right, so now my surface area is going to be 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, because those are the bounds that were supplied to us here, of f of x times root 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. All right, now, if you wanted to, 
We could simplify this a little bit. Not much, though. 1 plus 9x to the fourth might make it a little bit easier to type in the calculator, but that's it. All right, so this would actually be a really easy one to do by hand. But again, we're not going to waste our time with that today. We're more focused on the setting up of the integrals. All right, so integral from 0 to 1, uh, x cubed times root 1 plus 9x to the fourth. All right, we get 0.567. So that's going to equal 2 pi times 0 0.567, So let's multiply that by 2 pi. And our answer is approximately 3.563. Let's take a look at one more today. So find the area of the surface formed by revolving x squared on the interval 0 to root 2 about the y-axis as shown. All right, so we're revolving around the y-axis, which is going to change a little bit. Okay. So let's start by writing down the formula that we're going to be using here. Surface area equals 2 pi, integral from 0 to root 2. Now because we're revolving on the y-axis, my radius is just x. So it's just going to be x times root 1 plus f prime squared. All right, so f of x equals x squared, which means f prime is 2x. So 2x squared dx. Again, if you want to simplify this a little bit, you can. It's not necessary. Again, this is another one that would be really easy to do by hand by a use substitution. But for now, for now, let's just use our calculator. So 0 to root 2 of x root one plus four x squared. Actually, get a decent fraction here, 13 6. So this is 2 pi times 13 6, which we can simplify this down to 26 over 6. So it'll be 13 pi over 3 would be our actual answer there. If you want a rounded answer, 13.614. today on arc length and surface area. Actually, well, that will do it for the chapter eight as well. So thanks again for watching our video today and I'll see you next time.